This is my Warco WM250V three phase infinitely variable lathe. Came with a three jaw chuck, four jaw, and a face plate, and I absolutely love it. But, but could it be improved? I was going to say that. Okay, welcome back to the workshop. So this is part two of making this electronic lead screw and fitting it to my lathe. If you watch part one, you'll know that I'm, I'm putting the kit made by uh, James Clow from Clow42, um, but still got to adapt it to suit my lathe, and that's what we need to get on with. As you can see here, the lathe's pretty much in the same state as I left it before. Got the front panel removed, just to have a look around there for fitment of different options. Maybe put the main control box here, not sure yet. And around the side, I was having a look at where my motor or servo might go to control the feed screw and where the encoder will go. So while I think about that, let's go over to the bench where we've got all the electronics, so we need to do a little bit of soldering. Okay, so I think we're about set up here. So we've got the soldering iron, solder, we've got the multimeter, uh, we've got a scope, don't think I'll need that, but it's a convenient way to earth the electrostatic uh, wrist strap there around the outside of the BNC. Uh, it's plugged in, but it's not switched on, so you get earth continuity to there. And we've got a power supply so we can power up the board once we've uh, soldered it and just test it out. Okay, so let's see what we've got in the bag then. So we've got the logo business card. Oh, you know, it says a chip missing on the board. This is flash memory chip that was included but never used due to current, yeah, semiconductor shortage, not available, not affect functional lead screw. Oh, okay, fair enough. I guess the, the memory, the code is all stored actually on the um, DSP or microprocessor rather than this. Okay, fine. Oh, there's another bag. Okay. So that. Is that it? Yep. Uh, that's the kit reference, by the way. That was... Uh, Available from his shop from eBay. Okay, so we've got the two header pins that go through that connect this door to board onto the microprocessor. So those, okay. Okay, so that must be for the stepper servo. That part obviously goes, that part goes to the board, and then that's to the stepper or servo driver. Looks in there, okay, fine. That's the standard little power supply connector. Okay, and then the right angle pins. So I think one set of these uh, goes out to the display, and what does the other set do? Oh, we got one spare. Uh, not sure why we've got two. So one set goes in, okay, let's open this up, you can't see the light reflecting. Yeah, so, easy one to hear, uh, that way, one each side, that one goes on there. That one's there, I assume on the top. And then that one, I think it goes on that way. There must be a spare one, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's get started. So we'll set it up in this little vise here. I've got some soft jaws in there. And I think we'll start, as James did, by soldering the power terminal on onto there. at the limits of this solder nine. That is 
zero. The main one though is the board underneath. Alright, we'll go with that. Okay, next is the five pin header for the display and I did what James did, so I've clipped that on so it's loosely in position and then I put a washer behind and I've put a, um, a plug on there to make sure the spacing is correct. Now I've only got a, five, a four pin plug and it's a five pin so hopefully this one at the end will be okay. And then that is pushed parallel so that connector is parallel to the board and should be able to solder on the back, at least get the first one in or maybe the first and last and then it will hold itself. This lead free solder is not as, there we go, not as good as the old stuff. On the bottom, and then they get soldered along the top, and there's one that side as well. And then we've got the servo or stepper output, which goes across there, and obviously gets soldered at the back. So I'll do that, and then I'll bring you right back. Well, I had to change tips in the end and put. Um, really fine one on just to get those header pins in but I think we got there in the end so it doesn't look too bad maybe not gonna win any uh, soldering prizes I think they're all okay so uh, check the continuity as well and that's fine and there's no continuity between the pins and their neighbours so uh, hopefully nothing's joined and shorted. Right, that is the first board. Complete. Okay, the next thing we need to have a look at is the microprocessor itself. So again, it's in one of these nice anti-static bags, so we'll take that out. And we need to set a number of dip switches, and we need to pull some jumpers at the debug end, which I think is up here, uh, to make sure you can't put power onto the board in two different places. So we'll open it up, and then we'll set those dip switches. So there we go, so I think this little daughter board will end up, I won't push it all the way on, but ends up going on there. Let's make sure it's yeah, okay. So that'll go on there. And then um, the encoder is one of these two. I think it's a five pin. I think it's that one there, but we'll check. And then I think that's all we need to connect to the board because it gets its power via this. And yeah, there's a drop down to 3.3 there. I think that's the regulator there. All right. So there's the board, so we need to take out sorry, the light shining, there we go. Uh, these three jumpers and we need to set go 
Well, they're tiny, aren't they? Uh, S9, which is down there. And we need to set S4. Which is somewhere. Oh, there. S4 there. And uh, we need to set S3. Uh, which is down there. Right. All right. Let's, uh, well, first of all, let's just take these jumpers out because that's nice and easy to do. And then we'll go and look at setting these switches. Okay, now this one here needs to be down because for some reason the logic is reversed. One is down. Um, but to be honest, that is down already. That is definitely already down. All right, now we'll go on to the next one, which is S4, which is up here. Uh, and that needs to be up. So I'll take this Kafton tape off. Being extra careful here because I ordered this board in January or February 2022. And because of the global chip shortage, it was on back order and they said it would arrive around June. So I thought, okay, well, nothing I can do. I put the order in. And then around June, I got an email, so I thought, all right, it's coming. And the email said, sorry, there's more delay, and it will be December uh, 2022. So I thought, okay, well, not much I can do. And then towards the end of August, out of the blue, it arrived. So I've been waiting to do this project for some time. Also means if I mess this up, it will damage the board. I'm going to have to wait a long time, so that S4, that needs to go up. Okay, and then there are two on S3, which are down in this corner here, and they both need to be down. I guess one of the great things about this sort of board is it's very multifunctional, very configurable. You can do an awful lot with it, but that does mean you've got to configure things uh, to make it do what you want. So those are both down. I don't believe how small those switches are. Very small. Right, and then S4. Done S4, S3. Oh, was that last one? S9. Oh, because S9 was already down. That's what threw me. S4 is up. S3 has got two switches, and they're both down. Um, there's no mention of S6 and S8 for what we need to do, so we'll leave those alone. Uh, currently, that one's down and that one's up, so hopefully that's okay. Okay. Next thing we'll do, we'll just put um, five volts into the little daughter board there and just make sure that's okay so I've just made up this little cable here and you can get the center positive center negative I seem to remember so I've and I think the board needs center positive so I've connected it up that way let me just check that so if we put negative on that side and positive in the middle we get positive 5 volts so that is positive center configured So I'll just bring in the board and hopefully I'll just Okay. It's a bit bright there, sorry for the camera, but we get our 3.3 and 5 volts. So it should just sit back here. going on? Yes. Is that it? No. 
There we go. Alright, looking good. Now it looks like you can uh, stack some more on there. Alright. Okay, looking good so far. Okay, next thing we'll do, we'll just temporarily get this stepper motor wired up so we can at least bench test it and then we know we're okay. So I've got a multimeter set on continuity because I need it on the very lowest range. And this is our stepper motor here. I forget the serial number. Oh, it's there. There's the serial number of it. And you'll see we've got four wires coming out of that and we've got four wire or terminals it can go into A plus A minus, B plus B minus and those represent across the coils inside here and it's absolutely imperative you get them correct or not shorted at least. Um, if you get the pa a pair of them the wrong way around it will just reverse the direction so that's okay but you know, you've got a choice here if you get it wrong these can you know, go up in smoke. So a couple of ways you can check it. Um, it's just a coil of wire ultimately, so you can uh, measure the resistance across it. Now this will beep because it's on the lowest setting. So if I go across, say, red and blue, and hold them, we got, if you can see that where, sorry, let's tilt it up a little bit. So red and blue. Uh, 1.8 ohms, so that represents a coil in terms of what we need here and then let's do yellow and green that must therefore be the other coil uh, 1.9 okay now if we go across any of the others let's say red to green we get nothing at all red to yellow nothing at all if we do blue to green nothing at all and blue to yellow nothing at all so it's important we get yeah you know, something with a bit of resistance across it a coil um, connected correctly. Now the, the other way you can check if you haven't got one of these or you want to double triple check is if I, this is not going to be easy on video, but if I just spin that hopefully you can hear and see that that's relatively free running. Now weirdly even at really low RPM if I join what I now know to be the coil, I'm pretty sure is the coil, together and do it. Oh wow, can you hear that? That is not happy because it's fighting, generating power, and I'm shorting it out. And same, so if I back again, and if I do the same yellow and green, which I'm pretty sure is the other coil, yeah, yeah. So those are my pairs A and B. Um, if I get this pair backwards it'll just run a different way around so you know no risk there it's really important just just to get the coils separated out right let's wire that up get some power in here and then at least we've got this side done Okay, so we've got our mains coming in, so in the UK, brown is live, blue is neutral, that's earth. Uh, obviously I'd put these ring terminals on, uh, the ones with the complete circle. Uh, these are not really allowed, uh, you know, as code if you like, to, to have the fork style. But we're just bench testing for now, and the other thing that would be a bit dubious is we've got plus and minus, which I'm using blue and brown for on the DC side. But again, I'm just mocking this up. This will all be done properly and this won't be the actual power supply so I think we're okay just on the bench. Um, let's just double check, plus minus, live neutral earth, clip that down which makes it a bit more difficult to electrocute yourself. Oh crap, <laughs> how did that get in there? That could have been interesting. Okay, obviously we're just testing here. I'd normally put uh, little ferrules on there, as I say. Um, okay, so we've got uh, plus, minus DC. We've got our pair for red and blue on one coil and yellow and green on the other one. So that's okay. So we just need our pulse and uh, direction. Actually, we can, um, we can just dab that with five volts on the pulse and just see if it actually just 
move around very very slowly. Right, let's let's bring the five volts in and we'll clear this out. I'll plug in our power supply. Twenty six volts. Okay, well, that's fine. I've obviously wound it down slightly from thirty. So we've still got five volts set up on there. So what we'll do, we'll take that out, put two little crocodile clips and just dab them on the pulse on here and we should see some motion in the stepper motor it should move around here ever so slightly then we know at least we've got that side working okay so we've got five volts on here so if we go into the pulse and every time I dab it it moves around Alright, so I think we're good there. So the next thing we need to look, have a look at is the encoder. So let's clear this out of the way. So this is the model that James recommended. So it's 1024 pulses per rev. And we've got, I think it was five outputs on it. Yeah, these five so what I need to go and oh, here we go it's written on here so brown is power positive blue zero shield goes to ground output a black output b white and output z orange so I need to work out which order I want to run that uh, through the connector so we're reading into the right signals it might say on the board or it might be one of those where I go and read the instructions again. Right, back in a minute, let's go and sort this out. This isn't my favourite connector to make up, but this is a... These are the DuPont uh, 2.5 4mm spacing kit. And uh, comes with all these little female female pins. And you can see I've got it half sticking out, half sticking in. And I've got the 1.5mm, very small um, jaws on here. So I've got it half sticking out so I don't damage the outer part where it's gonna got to have that non-return feature and then I've got it clamped in the vise because it's otherwise you haven't got enough free hands and then I'm going to carefully feed it and then crimp. Yeah, I think we're done there, we're about ready to plug this one in then. So um, it's always a bit fiddly I find to make these really small uh, connections onto the cables. So if um, anyone's got a good way of doing that, that's um, maybe a bit better than using this sort of system, um, do let me know. Sometimes I cheat and buy this ready-made with a, a tail on it and then just solder the wires onto the end of that. But I thought this time I'd persevere and make it look a bit neater. Uh, I won't make use of the screen at the moment, but in the final install we'll uh, screen that down to the earth. And then, yeah, the other thing is um, a number of these cables, they'll pass through the uh, the main box itself, the control panel, and you'll have a connector. So I think I was going to use these. These are GX16. So I deliberately went for different number of pins. I think it's a three, five and a six pin. So, that, you know, you couldn't plug them in incorrectly. So one of them be the encoder. Uh, there's another one for uh, pass through for the stepper driver or servo which I'm probably going to use and then the other ones are going to be in spliced into this cable if you like for the display because that's somewhere else so the display will plug in servo will plug into the box uh, and the encoder will plug in as well I think there's something else oh obviously the mains um, so I've got those for the uh, signals but we'll come on to that a bit later let's just make sure it works first okay so this connects onto those terminals there now it's theoretically possible to connect this either way around. I do know the black is signal A because it's on there. Um, and then on the board, it's got um, 1A on that pin. So I need to make sure that the black is towards this end. Is it going to go on? OK, 
Okay, there we go. All right. Let's just get this set up so we can see it all. Okay, let's uh, see, if, see if it all works. So we've got our power supply, stepper driver and stepper motor. We know they work because we pulsed a little signal onto here earlier. Um, just before I put all this together, I took this into the house and I downloaded the software for this. So it's um, Code Composer Studio. Now the latest version is version 12. And when I installed that, um, it didn't offer me the debugger, uh, which is compatible with the debugger chip on here. And I wondered about that and wondered maybe uh, they'd incorporated it into that version of the software. So I proceeded anyway, but once it was installed, um, I couldn't get it to talk to the board at all. There didn't seem to be any option. It just kept um, throwing up error messages. So I only installed that, went back to the video that uh, James put out, obviously it was a few years ago now, and he used version 9.01 build 10, I think. Uh, anyway, if you check out his video, uh, he'll show you the exact build that he used. I went back, downloaded that exact build. It did this time, it gave me the option for the debugger software. So I selected that, installed it. Um, then I think it had to do a firmware update, something like that, reboot or two. And then it talked to the board and I was able to download the code onto the board. So it should have some code flashed. Um, I did have to configure, because I've got a metric lead screw and I couldn't remember when I was in the house what pitch I'd got, so I put 4mm pitch, so I put that in the software, so that's what's on here. That may or may not be correct, but all that will happen is that the steps will be incorrect here. I mean, that's that's fine, I can reflash that. I just want to see if in principle it's going to work. So we've got 5 volts there. Um, I'll switch on the main power supply for this, and uh, then and plug this into here, and then hopefully it will come alive. And then we'll plug in five volts into the board. Oh, that's a good sign. Software version 1.4. All right. Um, I guess that's feed in inches maybe anyway let's not worry about that luckily i've got the control panel so uh, we know on there what all the buttons do so i can press those i guess before we do that if i turn this it should not work okay but we're getting some kind of rpm all right well so what does that mean? That means, okay, that means uh, this works, the cable I made up works, the RPM's working, the display works, some of that board works, I guess the two lights are on, that's the 5 volts and 3.3 .3 volts, the microprocessor board's on. I wonder if it's because I didn't put all the cables in here, I don't normally use the enable, so I wonder... Yeah, I wonder if I take the 5 volt out, because I didn't complete that, you see I haven't put the enable pull, the enable cable down there. I'm going to try it without the 5 volts into the enable. By default, this should just run with no signals in there at all. Uh, so let me take that out and then we'll try it again. So let's power off first. Okay. Okay, I think this time we'll plug the board in first. Okay, and then we'll turn this on. Okay. Okay, moment of truth, so if we turn this and nothing happens. Uh, yeah, well, I was just laughing to myself because I was just getting ready for a, you know, a bit of diagnosis. I've got the scope on, uh, got everything hooked up. I was about to power it back up again. And I was looking at the power supply down here, and there's a little green LED light when it's on. It's quite faint because it's quite an old one. Um, but, you yeah, know, it looks like it's on. And 
I just checked over at the switch and basically, uh, tell you what, let me show you. So this is the plug for the oscilloscope and then this is the plug for that 48 volt or 30 volt in my case stepper driver power supply. Also I thought, so if you look down here, my soldering iron is on now, I don't need to solder anything so I don't know why that is on and that cable goes round and that is what I switched on. What I need to do is plug this in and <laughs> the stepper power supply should work and um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't say anything in the instructions about plugging in a soldering iron instead of power supply. You know, these, these things need to be made clear, don't they? Right, so we'll swap this over and let's see how we get on. I'll unplug that and plug in the real power supply. Okay, now this time you can see that light is a lot brighter, so that's definitely on. So that's good, and no, I couldn't really tell if they're on or not. Right, so we just need to plug the board in. Hopefully, this time we'll get some movement. Okay, just going through the boot up. All right. We go, moment's truth. Oh, yes. It's squeaking away like they do, but it's moving. So, presumably, this is in inches per fortnight or something, so. Uh, Now, if I remember, I think that's S8. S7 gets covered by that, so that's S6. Inch millimeter is then S5. Okay. And then up and down. Uh, up must be eight. Okay, so is this in thread mode or feed? One, two, three. Oh, we're in millimeters, okay. And feed one, two, three, four. This would be so much better when I got the box together. Okay, we're on. Fourth light's on, I guess that's feed, so fourth button, S4. Okay, that's that's feed, isn't it? Let's boost that up a bit. Go both ways? Oh yeah. Happy customer. So apart from that glaring emission in the instructions that tells you make sure you plug the power supply in and not the soldering iron to run the stepper motor, I must contact James about that and let him know. Um, it works and that worked first time. Now as I said a little while ago this may or may not be the correct ratio. I've got, I'm not sure what thread pitch I've got on my uh, lathe, um, it's a metric one. I th it's either two or four and I can't quite remember um, and I've put four millimeters and flashed that onto software so this assumes a four millimeter pitch but you know no big deal um, if it's wrong I can just take it back in the house change the code reflash it on there and then we'll go be good to go um, I've also told it this is on micro steps so we're on 1600 on here so I, I did put that in the code and there was something else I put in there as well in terms of steps I can't quite remember what it is now oh yeah the um, uh, steps for the stepper which I think were 200 on this which is fairly typical okay so what to do next so I'm not going to be using this driver and stepper ultimately I think we're going to go for the servo that uh, James used so I need to order one of those that was the integrated uh, servo um, I need to buy a 48 volt power supply 
Um, I've got a 5 volt cooling fan on order and that will run off the same 5 volts that feeds this. Hopefully that will be okay. Um, that saves me putting yet another power supply in the box. The other option was to get a 48 volt fan and run it off the 48 volt supply. But uh, I could only find pretty big ones like 120 millimeters for that. Uh, maybe if I looked a bit harder I could have seen some smaller ones, I don't know. Um, so we'll try that 5 volt fan on there. That saves another power supply. So I think I need to lay out the electrical box, what's in the control box, work out how much space I need, uh, work out where my ins and outs are going to go, and just develop the electrical scheme from there. Uh, and then on the lathe, I need to work out where I'm going to put the servo, because the integrated servo is a little bigger than this one, um, and how to mount this, and how I'm going to basically work it all out. I oh, also need to double check the um, um, pitch on my bleed screw, so maybe actually. Let's park the electrical work for now and let's do a bit mechanical and see if we can just double check uh, the pitch of my lead screw. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, I don't think I explained what was going on here. So um, I haven't made up a little uh, DuPont connector that goes from here to here because ultimately that needs to be made up and then goes into um, GX16 plug into the main control box, um, you know, the, the enclosure, and then there's the other side of the GX16 plug that then goes over to here because the display is going to be separate uh, mounted on the lathe. So I didn't want to make up a, a dedicated cable just for that. And I've just got these single sort of little connectors, single DuPont connectors, um, and they've got a male on one end and a female on the other. And I've just used the breadboard basically just to join the two ends together because I didn't have female to female. So I only had female to male, across to male, and then into there. So it's, it's basically just joining the wires together. That's it. Nothing fancy. Um, okay. I thought I'd explain that just in case you were confused. Okay, so we're back over at lathe now. And yeah, as you can see, it's still in pieces, but that's fine. because we need to see what we're going to be doing here. Um, so I've got a DTI set up on the carriage here, on the tool post. So this will move along with the carriage. Uh, I've engaged the half nut down here, so it's connected to the lead screw there. And I've zeroed it, and I've taken up the backlash. So when I turn the lead screw by hand down here, uh, we'll turn it and just see how many millimetres it goes here. Now, I thought it was four millimetre pitch, uh, which is what I've programmed into the uh, software on the microprocessor. Um, that's what I flashed into there, if you like, but I've got a sneaky suspicion it, it might be two. I could go and read the manual, but where's the fun in that? Let's, uh, let's give this a go and then we can confirm for ourselves. Also, I can double check that that A is a uh, one-to-one. -one and uh, actually while we're here i can check what b and c are as well anyway we're in uh, range a down there which i think is straight through and let's see what we got okay and we'll wind it on so that's about nine o'clock and that's gone halfway half millimeter uh that's just past six o'clock and that's done a millimeter already so yeah it's going to be two isn't it uh, now we're at three o'clock it's one and a half oh, just about turning and now 12 is somewhere about there it's somewhere there yeah give or take we're back to zero so this is definitely a two millimeter pitch lead screw and also that a is yeah i'm pretty sure that means that is one to one as well Okay, I think we'll call it there and end on a high. Now we know that works. Um, the only thing really I've got to change is to flash new software in there. So it's a two millimeter lead screw at the moment. It's programmed for four millimeter, but you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, other jobs we've got to do then is I've got to work out where everything's going to go in the enclosure. Got to work out how big that enclosure needs to be. Uh, make a custom knockout panel at the bottom, which will have things like this, all little through connectors in. So I can plug the servo in, the encoder, the display, I have mains coming in as well. Um, I'm going to um, have it also feed the digital readout. So when you switch that main switch on, the, the existing digital readout comes on and this at the same time. Uh, so we've got that job to do. We've got to work out and finalise where the encoder goes on the lathe and where the servo goes on the lathe as well. So there's it's still quite a lot to do, but making good progress. OK, all that remains to be said then is thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're enjoying this project Evolve and you don't want to miss anything, then feel free to subscribe and then click that bell if you want to get notification, all that kind of stuff. And see you next time.